So let's go to some of the images that you shot on, uh, was that Sunday? Sunday. Yeah, Sunday, great. So let's go ahead, you've made some adjustments to this one. Yep. So let's, let's do a new variant of that image. There you go, right click, new variant. And now you have your own workflow in Capture One. And I yeah. think that's, that's a really important uh, sidebar to this whole going over Capture 112 is that your workflow uh, is interesting from my perspective, uh, but the fact remains that it is your workflow. I have no in, intention of telling you what your workflow should be. I might point out some, uh, some duplications of things or maybe some ways you can streamline it, but your workflow is your workflow and you have your software set up in a very specific way. So I think you should Load your software. workflow that you have for, so window, workspace, and then you have one for 12 that you made. I think it's that right last here. one, yeah. So this resets all the tools and everything exactly how you always use them. So if this is the image that you've already edited, let's, let's start. Well, let's pick a better image. I okay. think we might have one like this. Yeah, that's a TIFF, because you already uh, processed okay, that we one. We work with that one. We yeah. have that one. So let's just reset it. Okay. If that's okay with you. That's me. fine by me. Okay, so we'll just reset all. So this is the raw file out of the IQ4 150. And uh, let's go ahead and this was shot with what? The Rodenstock 23? What, this was probably the 23, yes. Okay. So let's start to edit this how you would want to edit. So what, what do you want to do first? Well, before I, I do that, let me okay. explain my philosophy for my workflow because I think everybody will agree it's the best workflow. Okay. <laughs> I like to work left to right. So for me, I like to have my thumbnails on the left, as you see here, mm -hmm. and my image in the middle, obviously. And then what I wanted to do was build up my tools. So the histogram was at top, which was always the most important aspect. For right, me. and this is a, a, a reference histogram to what the edited image reflects. Correct. White balance, because that's the first step. No. Exposure adjustments, dynamic range adjustments, clarity, and then I can work on levels. Now, levels is also one of the early adjustments I sometimes also introduce, depending mm -hmm. on what I'm shooting or uh, the conditions or the, the shape of the histogram. In this case, we have a very nice looking histogram. And, and just to, to go back to this levels tool at 0 to 255, that's what we just right. talked about with the Luma range, your absolute values of 255. You have your input values on the bottom, you have your output values on the top Correct. Uh, that you can adjust. For I believe you used to call them target values. Yep. And you do have red, green, and blue abilities to you know adjust individual channels. We're going to close that down. Then I have the layers tool, which would be the next step. After I've done mm -hmm. pretty much my primary global adjustments, I'd go into layers. Then I would actually sometimes do curves, vignettes, spot removal, any keywords if I'm going to do that. Uh, styles and presets I have at the bottom. Mm -hmm. uh, and I don't do styles and presets that much. I kind of start from scratch, but there are some great styles if you want to like get a start on black and white or something like that. Sure. And then I have base characteristics in case I'm bringing in uh, files from an old system and I want to make sure that I'm working with the latest sure. engine. Sure, but let's start with base characteristics. You know, your, yours is at the very bottom, but let's go and look at that very uh, first before we start editing anything. Right now, you know, the majority of our customer base shoots with the, the phase one camera system, the XF camera system in a studio with flash. Right. So by default, Capture One will load uh, a flash profile. This was not illuminated no, with flash. It was shot pretty much in dreary daylight. So let's go ahead and choose an appropriate ICC profile. So if you scroll down there, we have a, there's a landscape one and a neutral one. Either one of those is going to be perfect for what this is. Now, it was a pretty gray day. So. Yeah, but you can actually see the, 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 the image change as we go up and yeah, down. Yeah, exactly. But let's go to neutral or landscape? Do landscape. Landscape, since it was a landscape. It is a landscape. And now your curve is the distribution of that ICC profile. Yep. Um, now, uh, the auto curve just evaluates the scene and just nine times out of 10, it looks at it and just says, we're going to put a standard <laughs> contrast curve on here. Just a normal photographic S curve. Correct. But in this particular case, let's put on a linear response curve. So your linear response curve is very, very flat. So we can see that the image gets desaturated, it gets darker, we can see what happened to your histogram where it just moves all the way uh, over to the left. But this, for me, is always a good starting point because you know that sky with the contrast, I, I would have to recover the highlights. Sure. But if I'm starting at a point where I have all the highlights, now I can just you know, really uh, use all that dynamic range and, and bring up the, the shadows. 
Okay, but in some cases, though, I might even opt, if I was doing it, and actually try to pull in the extra shadow sure. uh, curve. I think what's important is that there isn't a wrong way to do this. Everybody's going to have their own workflow. You have yours, I have mine. Uh, as a sanity check, you could use that linear response to just say, did I burn out the highlights? I know I'm a good photographer and I, I check my clip warning when I'm taking the image, but just pulling it in the software, I can put on linear response and say, nope, all the detail is there in my highlights. I know I've got everything and I can pull up all that rich detail from the shadows. Now, we do have the exposure warning tool, which I can mm -hmm. turn on. And, and this actually becomes good in editing at, at 1.2, uh, but... I have mine normally set for 245, so I, I know when I'm approaching the 255 level right. and I have the shadow set at 15. Right. I think if we move over into the shadow area, we're at uh, 13. Yeah, you know, we're, so we're not we're not quite the black yet, but it's... Well, go it's, ahead and change your curve distribution to one that you wanted. What did you want? The extra shadow? The extra shadow. There you go. And yeah. you can see how that uh, that responds. And now you've pulled up a lot of that shadow detail. You still got some very yep. dark spots. You've got one uh, highlight in there that you might want to change. But... So in, in my first step would be usually is just try to recover highlight here. Sure. And recover a little bit on the shadow side there, knowing that in some cases, like under the bridge here in certain areas, I'm going to mm -hmm. have pure black. So that's mm -hmm. probably how far I would take it. And I've already got a good start on, on the direction I yeah. want to go. And now you have a, a very flat image with all the detail right. in there, and now you can go ahead and, and work on the, the edit to bring out the detail that you want. So the first step I would probably do on my workflow is adjust a little more of the contrast, mm -hmm. maybe just a tad of saturation, and let's see where the white balance is. I'm at 5,700. That's about... I don't see any color shifting going on in the highlight areas, the white areas. And because we were really in a dreary day, it's going to want to push it up just a little bit more warmer than typical yeah, daylight. Yeah, so sure. let's leave it alone for now, although okay. uh, we could. Now, uh, we've got that done. Clarity, I've, I used to be bad at clarity because mm -hmm. I would actually put so much clarity in it. It was like stepping on glass. <laughs> right, all right. So I don't shift the clarity that much. But if I have an area where... Uh, I'm shooting a landscape and there's a haze in the background, like a distant yeah. haze or something yep. like that. The clarity tool comes in really handy and sometimes you just might want to punch it. Or punch just... is going to use a little bit of saturation. Yeah. But I find that that works well. In, in this case, I might want to just add a little bit of clarity for this area in here. Just, okay. just to open it up just a bit and you know it might just pop it out of here. Sure. And, but let's just turn this highlight tool. We don't need that anymore, so we'll turn that off. Um, you know, our level hasn't changed much. We do have the ability to change the mid-level. So mm -hmm. by changing the mid-level just a bit, I can just brighten it up even just a hair more. Yeah. And if you click on the A for the levels, that's going to apply an auto levels, and it's yeah. just going to get rid of the wasted space. So again, I told you this is your input, yeah. this is your output. So we're kind of getting rid of the, the blackest of the blacks, and we're starting at a value of 3. That 3 will become 0 in the process file. Uh, we've cut away all this wasted headroom uh, in the highlights. 238 is going to 255. Now. Right. So you can see the image has jumped considerably yeah, absolutely. From, from where we started. And we haven't even begun to uh, take care of the, the, the real stuff that we can do in the sky. Right. Um, so is that going to be the next step? You want to edit that sky? I think that's time for putting the lum luminosity mask into the sky area. Yeah, the luma range, sure. The luma range, sorry. Well, we would call it no whatever problem. we'd like. So um, you got some, some options for a starting point. You can paint in the mask, of yep. course, uh, or you can just do a, a fill mask of everything, erase what you don't want. Uh, you can use that, uh, that linear gradient mask to put it in the sky. Well, in evaluating the image, what I'm seeing is I know I only want to affect the sky, but I also have bright areas in the water here mm -hmm. that I don't want to turn darker. Sure. It almost would become the point of like, uh, you know, going gray and flattening right. out. So uh, let's, let's paint it in then. Okay. So we can do it two ways. Let's, I can just go to the paintbrush yep. and draw a mask. And I'm going to put just a big old broad brush in here. And I'm going to come in here. So typically uh, with Capture 111, I would start a new mask mm -hmm. and I would draw in a mask. And I would go in here and I would use auto mask to kind of get me around the edges. And find the, the edges, sure. Now we're going to use Luma Range to kind of replace that feature. Okay. Uh, and it's a much more controllable and it's parameterized again, so we can edit it as we go. So it's not going to be right or wrong and frustrate us when it doesn't get it right. We're going to be able to go in there and fine tune it. 
But I, what I would do first is yeah. go ahead and just delete that mask because you know one nice thing is if you don't have a layer and you grab the brush tool, the second you start painting, it's going to create a new layer. Okay. Now, first we want to turn off the uh, the actual auto mask. So right click there and click off the auto mask. Great. Right. Now just start painting in your mask. We haven't created a mask, but the second you start painting, one is there. Now nothing is showing up because we don't have the mask as shown. So if you I can come down here and Okay, click and hold and only oh, display when drawing. Sure, you can okay. do that. So there we go, and we're going to come in here. And you don't have to be too no, careful not, with all this. That's pretty broad. Yeah. So there we go. And then you get a little bit up there. Yeah. And now what I like to do, you just kind of painted this uh, by right. yourself just to make sure that the density and everything is correct. There's a, those three little dots there. I like to click on that and just say fill mask. And all that's going to do is look at the outline of your mask and make sure that if there's any pockets that you missed, now it, it filled it. You know, many times when I do masking, one of the tools is I just go around the edges yep. and create the circle. And once the circle's created, then I do the fill mask and yeah. it fills everything in. This one I kind of was just painting for demo purposes. So now let's turn on the, the Luma range and we can go in there and kind of see what we're working with. We can tell it to display the mask. And so now this is going to show the mask and show what we're selecting in the actual Luma okay, range. There we go. So now that this is showing the mask, it's showing what we're selected, you can see it's already deselecting some of the, uh, the clouds, the highlights, which could be fine. Depends on how we want to do this. Now, right now you're looking at the mask being generated on top of, you know, red. Correct. And it's a red mask, you can always edit the color of the mask, but what I like to do is use the, the grayscale. So you can go ahead and apply that or cancel it. It doesn't matter because um, we're going to go back into it. Let's just cancel it for now. Sure. Okay. And so now let's go down to where the brush is, click and hold, and we want to turn on the actual display grayscale mask. There we go. So now this is just a grayscale of what the mask looks like. You can go ahead and choose the uh, Luma range now. And now we can get a, a much better overview of what it is we're actually selecting. Oh, look at how that, the edges are being defined now. Yeah. Oh, very clever. So now you can really see the structure of what that's uh, doing. Now, we know that there's a little yeah. bit of a roof on top of that building that's going to be selected. That might fall in our Luma range. That, that might just be the way we need to yeah, work with it. It was a white roof, unfortunately. All right. But I think that is sort of where we need to be. Yep. Yeah. And now you can go ahead and play with the radius and the sensitivity so you can kind of adjust that uh, that fall off. Now radius is going to, how's it going to affect us on like the trees and the edges? Well, if the radius is, is really, really big and the sensitivity is uh, really, really low, now all of a sudden it's going to bleed over all of those uh, those tree branches. So this is going to be a balance. And as you're moving that radius, you should be able to see some of those branches kind of come in and go out. You got to let yeah. the mask show uh, catch up with you once you let go of the cursor. So see how it just kind of yeah, it yeah, feathers yeah. It's that nice entire... nice and soft now, okay. And then you can go ahead with the sensitivity and kind of find yeah. your balance between the radius and the sensitivity so that you can get the trees, but you know, not to, or not get the trees and get the clouds behind it. Maybe not to have any halos or anything like that. I think... I think we're looking pretty good, don't you? Yeah, looks good to me. So we do apply. Apply, and now you've created that mask. And then you can go ahead and turn off the, uh, the grayscale. Now you'll notice that the grayscale shortcut uh, on it this is. Mac is going to be Option M to toggle between a grayscale mask and a normal an mask. M. There you go. It's always good to begin to learn these things. So sure. M, M is mask. Yep. Option M is gray mask. Absolutely. Grayscale mask. Yep. Okay. However, oh. one of the additions, uh, if we take a little a little side uh, step with uh, talking about the masks, the additions to Capture One Twelve is to be able to fine tune all of those shortcuts. And I think that's that's and really important commands. because as this this uh, software changes and expands, we want to make sure that it's very easy for you to customize okay. what those keyboard shortcuts are. Cool. So if you go into the uh, Capture One menu there, uh, and I think you want to go over to File, or is it Edit? It's Edit. Edit keyboard, keyboard, keyboard shortcuts. shortcuts. Now you can go ahead and search whatever it is you think you want to uh, you know change. So if we just go ahead and we start typing. Grayscale, we should have, let's search mask, we should have all the shortcuts for our mask. It's nice to see the ability if you if you want to work with certain keys just to be able to customize them for your own. Yeah, absolutely. 
I mean, not everybody's going to use all the different shortcuts that there are. In no, and, and what's important is that, again, your workflow is your workflow. We have no desire to dictate what your workflow is, what your keyboard shortcuts need to be, what, how you use the software. You're the photographer. We're the tool makers. Yeah, even when you don't like my workflow. I, I, I didn't say I didn't like it. I uh, have That's some different. questions. Okay, well, I'll answer those questions for you after I finish playing with my image. All right, so we've created a, a great mask for that sky. And now you can go ahead and you can start editing that mask. Now, I probably would go fit. two different directions. I'm going to go down on exposure just to put some drama. Sure. And maybe just a little bit of recover on the highlights. Now, at one time, uh, Capture One used to have, and I believe these are little brushes here. Mm -hmm. this, sim this is the symbol that shows you what's available. Yep for adjusting with the mask. When you're on a mask layer, any tool that has that little brush in the upper corner, that means that you can use this tool on your mask. Back in the old days, you actually had to turn that on for each tool. And yeah, I mean, there was, there was different workflow iterations. Right. And you can still kind of do that here. You can go ahead and you can decide whether or not this is the white balance for the background layer, or if this is the white balance for my layer tool. You can have the two side by side. So I kind of like that sky, what I've done. Strapped uh, the exposure down a bit, just recovered a little bit on the highlights, mm -hmm. uh, and increased the contrast just a hair. And because I don't want any kind of odd colors creeping in, I just take a little bit of saturation. Sure. So, so we've done that with the sky. Let's put on a, uh, a, a gradient radial mask on this. And whether you want to add more vignette or you just want to darken down the middle because you were using that wide angle lens, you decide how you want to do that. But let's use that masking tool. So go ahead and create a new mask layer and go ahead and grab the gradient, uh, radial. sorry, radial gradient mask. Yep. yep. And where should we try it? draw it right in this area, I think. Yeah, I think that'd be good. Oh. And you don't need to be too, you know, you can move it around, you can yeah. adjust what it, how it's gonna look, what the feather is. I might bring that feather out just a lot more. Sure. What do you think? Now, we can hit M, right? Mm -hmm. I can see it. Yep. And so that's the area we're going to be playing with. Yep. Hmm. And if I wanted to make an adjustment on it, which would just a tad of brightness. Sure. You need a little more contrast yep. in that area. And I just want to bring up that color just a bit. Great. Now, because I have that mask, and uh, if I went into the color, this is just one thing I might do here, just because it's a, probably a good sh idea to show. I might want to go into the color editor here and pick like that red and just drive that saturation up and I can turn the mask off for this part. Mm -hmm. uh, that barn is not, that. I just wanted to pop that red just a hair. See how that just now? Yeah. And maybe just take the lightness back just a bit, mm -hmm. you know, and not make it so washed out. Also now this, the, the, the roof is well defined against here. Right. And the only thing I want to change now is lighten up probably the face of the uh, the bridge, it's a little too dark for me, mm -hmm. and I probably want to burn this area in down here. So, anyway, I'm I'm happy with what I'm seeing here. I think the radial uh, mask opened it up enough. We were able to apply uh, the color editor and, and change the color on that one spot there. Yep. So if I come back here to my adjustments tool now, I once again I have you know color adjustments and so forth over here, and my regular adjustments over here. I can now create another mask, mm -hmm. and it's not going to be, it's going to be a draw mask, I think. Okay. Um, I'll lower down the size. I'm not going to be too precise with this because what I'm going to do, I think, I'm going to play with it. Yeah, and so you can see the know. mask. And yeah. I'm just going to come down here. And this would be a good case for auto mask. If I turn auto mask on, Mm -hmm. And I just wanted to make sure I got the edge of that roof against the highlight area. Mm -hmm. And I want to use the second middle circle, correct? Correct. And which is where it's at. And just kind of do what I would call a little bit of overspray as I come down here. Mm -hmm. And that auto mask should define that edge yep. and clean it up for you. So. so it cleaned it up okay. A little bit. But what's nice, if you go now to your you know, erase tool, tool the erase tool. Erase tool, sorry. So now, if you make sure that auto erase, auto mask is on the erase tool, which it is, yes, now you're just doing the opposite of, you know, cleaning up that, uh, that edge with the auto mask feature, but on the erase. Like that. Yeah. 
And we'll come back down here a little bit like that. And right up in there. Okay, sure. Okay. Now what I want to do is go, and I can turn mask off. I, what I want to do is see if I can just, and this is one of the, the beauties of the, the color editor, in my opinion, is I can select a color mm -hmm. like this, and I can actually use it almost as a lighting tool and just bring up, without having to do even a highlight or shadow right, recovery, right. just bring that up just a hair, throw a little saturation in. And, you know, it was in the dark, but, you know, it's not overdone, and I didn't have to do anything more than use the color editor sure. and lighten that color up. Yeah. And last but not least, in this particular image, I'm going to create one more mask. Why not? Well, because I'm into this. And I have auto mask on, but it's not really going to matter down here. And I'm just going to take this area. And kind of just fill in your fill in my corners and right. and this will be a good case where once it catches up, do this, do that, come back up here to as you would say use the three dot tool and say fill mask. Right. I now have that area filled in. I right. can just fine tune any area I don't have tuned in, and now I'm just going to take this down just ever so slightly so that it's not so bright. It's that one spot I just don't want my eye to go to. I want to still define it and have nuances, but I don't want it to be you know, super bright. Right. So now I've got some pretty cool things, and I guess I can go back through with each layer and you know, look at the changes. Mm -hmm. There's the bridge. There's the radial mask and what we did in the center of the image. Yep. And there's our sky and how we recover that. Yep. So now before we move forward, right now you have all these images, uh, they're, they're uh, sorted by rating. Yes. So if we can sort them by name, let's see what images you took you know, around this capture. So if you click on this arrow up and down there, this will tell you that you can sort them by name. Damn. And then you have, uh, if you click on the little eye there, you have a filter on there. Oh, sorry, the plus or the, the magnifying glass, that one. Hit the X there. So now it's, it's going to list all these by their name. So we can see that before this shot, number 49 and 48, if you can scroll down a little bit more, we can see more. So you're in about the, the same area. So let's go ahead and select number 47. And you want me to do command? Sure. Yeah, do, do command. Okay. And go up and choose number, uh, was it 49? This one here. Yeah. So now what you what we can do is go to your adjustments clipboard, that little grocery bag with a check mark on it. And this shows us what our yep. uh, copied adjustments are. And go ahead and, and hit, just apply. hit apply. So now we've copied the adjustments from this main one, number 48. We're applying it to these two other ones. And it's going to take some time because we have these parameterized masks on there. Correct. And so it's going to put the masks in approximately the same location, but it's just going to choose the values uh, that we had in the Luma range. Yeah, look at that. So now we can go, if we go to, let's go to number uh, 47 there. Which would be, yeah. that 47? Yeah, and I'm just going to go ahead and, no, you did it. Okay. So now we can go and we can refine those masks. So if you go back to your Luma mask, layer one, and we go ahead and click on the Luma range of that specific mask. Now we can fine tune where that mask is. So does display the mask. I'm getting good at this. Yeah, nailing it. So now it's gonna show the mask and it's gonna show the range that we've selected. And now we can fine tune that mask, you know, the approximate mask and the approximate location, but only choosing those values. Now we can go ahead and choose the correct values when you made that exposure adjustment. So I don't need to have this, this, this whole dense blanket mask that I need to go in and erase and fine tune and everything. The beauty of having these parameterized masks is it's the approximate mask and the approximate location, but now I can fine tune what it selects. Right, so now I can even just take this down a little bit further. Yeah, you gotta go ahead and apply, apply before you sorry, can start yeah. making adjustments. That's a new, new thing to get used to is the fact that we have to do an apply. Yeah, because it has to save those parameters that you have. And then we, we pull down exposure just a hair more. Yeah. A little too much, but it's very dramatic. And let's see if we can do one more. And keep in mind that you're adjusting yeah. just that layer. Correct. So if you go back to the background layer, 
and you try and recover some of those highlights, that will now all of a sudden fall within the range of your Luma range mask, and the adjustment that you have on that mask will apply. Yeah, I don't know if I like it as much as I should because this was part of my exposure testing range yep. while I was doing my, my shot, but it is a pretty cool looking sky. Yeah, but it, I mean, the power of what that yeah, mask means and, and how that, that can be adjusted and how that can be integrated into a workflow to save time. So each individual image is no longer, it's no longer a requirement to make a mask right. for that specific image. If I change Such exposure, if I change you know, the, the framing a little bit, now all of a sudden that mask value is going to be copied and applied to those Such images. Such a time saver. Yeah, and oh. that's what we hope. This, this is going to be, well, the problem is it's going to make like my two bottle wine editing session. And we're going to cut it down to one to, bottle. Yeah, yeah. You're probably good for. Sorry about you know, that, Kevin. But, you know, probably better health that way. All right, very cool. Drew, thanks so much for this. Yeah, you're welcome. And, uh, and this you, is really just scratching the it's surface. Not scratching the surface, obviously. It's just. It's amazing what you can do. And I think one of the, the secrets as a photographer is once you get better at post-processing, when you're actually taking the picture, you have a better awareness mm -hmm. of what the possibilities are you know, that you can do in post-processing that are challenging you in actually getting yeah, the yeah. photograph in the first place. And, and not to, to bring this back to uh, my, my wonderful camera system that I love, but I mean, that's part of the thought process with the uh, IQ4 is that capture one inside gives you this link between your post-processing and the time of capture. So having those styles and everything gives you that ability to have that thought process while you're out in the field using the camera system. So question for you. Um, with the parametric settings or the parametric... Uh, A mask based on values. Okay. <laughs> yeah. 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 Now, can one of the, the things that as photographers we like to do specifically if we find a kind of a cool setting is to, yep. to save it as a style. Yeah, and can you save these, these? Yeah, absolutely. And I think that's what makes you know all of these things so powerful is I can just create on any image, I can uh, make a fill mask. So I fill in the whole thing and, and my Luma range just says select the values from 255 to okay. 235. And I want to make a, uh, you know, an exposure bump or a saturation bump on those values. I save that as a style. Any image that I put in there, I can apply that style it will have a mask that is over the entire image and know that it only selects these values. So, you know, if I always want to bump my shadows, instead of having to make a, a, a mask of the individual image where the shadows happen to be, I now have a tool that I can go ahead and shoot any image and always apply that style, that mask, and it will always find those shadow values and apply the adjustment that I want to either very, bumping very cool. it up or desaturating or whatever. So, you know, this, when you look at Capture 112, yes, we've fixed the UI, uh, cleaned it up and made it look a little bit more robust. We've added this ability to have plugins. Uh, and then we can just say on its face, yeah, we've added some masking tools. But what those masking tools mean for the future of the workflow of the software yeah. is significant. It's massive. It's very, very cool. I can't wait to really, really dive back into some of my older images. And I think that's going to be part of the fun for me is going yeah. back. And then that's, that's always the trouble with, uh, with yeah, Capture yeah. One. No matter what camera you, uh, you used at the time and no matter when you photographed it, you can always go back to a new version of the software and re-edit those images with new powerful tools. And, I've got uh, uh, amazing images. South quality. Georgia Island Antarctica ones where I can just, the skies were pretty cool to begin with and being able to do this kind of thing yeah, yeah. with them will just be amazing. I hope you got something out of this long demo. Right. But hey, you got a glimpse into not only how I would edit and approach an image, but also how we can use How I would disagree pattern. with how you edited it. We might have to do a whole video on what we disagree with. Actually, that might be the next one we do. Oh, that right. could be fun. All right, sweet. All right, so anyway, catch you all later.